Jan Plenser's work thinks about what it means to be human and how we can come together to dream of a better future. It's full of hopefulness and celebrates the possibilities within all of us. Wilsis, his sculpture of a girl's head, has overlooked the lake here in this beautiful part of YSP for the past five years and has really captured the imagination of visitors. We're delighted to welcome Jaume back to YSP with a new exhibition that focuses on his powerful drawings. In the chapel, the drawings consider what makes us who we are. Jaume talks about how our bodies are like a geography or a landscape that's mapped by our experiences and that our journey through life is somehow invisibly tattooed on our bodies. Other drawings pay homage to generations of anonymous people who've passed before us. These ideas resonate strongly in the chapel, which has been a gathering place for centuries. In small places close to home is a timely moment to reflect on Jaume's ideas about global communities, togetherness and unity, the things that connect us despite our differences. Jamma, welcome back to Yorkshire Sculpture Park. It's wonderful to have you here with us again in the Western Gallery and the chapel. Thank you. It's 11 years since your last exhibition here, and this is a very different exhibition. Maybe start by telling us about these beautiful mesh heads, and I believe there's a relationship between some of the works that you showed in your last exhibition here with us. Yeah, it is. Uh, I, I said many times that the most important things in life are always invisible. And those pieces are paying homage to that concept mm -hmm. because I call them invisible. It's this idea that we, we can embrace the idea of a certain head, anatomy, the portrait of somebody in this volume of the mesh that the 3D computer is developing exactly from the one scan. And, and that, I guess, is the true of one head or one person, no colors, no, no origins, no roots, no religions. It's just the shape of the person. And can you say something about the shadow drawings and the way that they're made up of these alphabets or figures, the letters that make up the figures? Alphabets are a beautiful metaphor about people and communities. Many times I said a single letter seems nothing but together with others. You can do wars, wars with wars, text, text with text, culture, culture with culture, etc. From the smaller to the greatest. The obsession in my work, especially in those drawings, was to create a gathering place in where everybody could join us. The diversity of alphabets is an incredible portrait of our world. I mean, making portraits of real people or using alphabets is probably the same is an homage to diversity, is a celebration of life. And these also relate to the piece White Nomad that's outside the chapel. That's it, yeah. And that takes that idea into three dimensions and the fact that you can actually walk inside that sculpture, mm. you feel almost embraced by that sculpture. Well, I, I guess in my concept, a sculpture has been always not an object but in a space in itself. I mean, uh, and, and I guess this kind of work is fantastic because it's inviting the people to penetrate in that space and to feel surrounded by the text and to look at through the text the wall. You, you know how many times I've been mentioning that for me the text is the partition of our voice, our music. And as a musician we are writing the partition in, in, in a paper, whatever, and that it's something that I could give to you, you can read my music, which is my voice. And, and those sculptures are celebrating that possibility, like a big mom that invited to protect you, and poetically it's like a shelter that protects you about the mosquitoes of life. And I think that links us really nicely to the works that we can see on the wall behind us here, the face series, because these are 
anonymous faces. We don't know who they are. We don't know when these photographs were taken necessarily. But each person that's shown is someone that's important as an individual. And you've also paired those faces with excerpts from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Yeah, but uh, since always I consider the, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights one of the most beautiful poems that people did in life. I guess it's Song of Songs, the, the most beautiful love poem, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But if you read carefully the text, you will see that we don't do nothing writing in, even a, a little comma, nothing. And why? It's because it's a dream, it's an aspiration. It's, it's, we, we consider ourselves completely imperfect, and, 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 and it's a declaration of uh, our intentions more than our facts. And, but that it's humanity. I mean, we are always trying to be better. The works behind you, um, the glass pieces, again, it's, they're really interesting works because they're involving drawing, but they also move into three dimensions and they're called continents and they have these bodies on them and they're surrounded by words, some of them places, some of them more abstract concepts and I know that those relate to your ideas about how our bodies are like a geography or a landscape that they become marked through time somehow invisibly. Yeah. I wonder if you could maybe talk a bit about that, yeah. that idea in your work. Yeah, it is. Uh, I since always also I consider the body as a geography in motion, moving. With, we have a, a perfect, very well-defined borders, things that we have to explore do, during our life. And I think it's an, a huge territory that we have to know better and better. We spend all our life in that way, in that direction. Because I could maybe lie when I'm talking about my soul, but it's hard to lie when I'm talking about my body. And, and I, I'm probably because I'm a sculptor, I uh, think it's very important to talk about r real things. I mean, the body is the real thing. But you cannot imagine or talk about the body if we don't talk about the invisible part of that body, which is the soul. In that piece, I think for me, very important piece, because it's uh, engraved by hand on glass plates. I wanted to do in glass, because the fragility, I guess, of the, our body, our, the human beings, uh, could not be done on plastic or acrylic, because it's too safe. It should be the fragility. And I remember I was engraving and engraving lines, and then the circle of cities, the names of the cities, the names of the body, concepts of the soul, qualities of the soul that we consider, and, and, and when you put one on top of the other, you create like something underwater, something because I also mentioned many times that for me water is the most important public space in the world because it does not belong to anyone, but be belongs to everyone at the same time. And it's always moving. Today the water is here and tomorrow there. Water is the main public space in the world. And I've been working many times near, or as close as possible to the water, or in the water. And that piece, for some reasons, because the glass has this kind of a strange greener color or something, it, it, it seems a liquid inside. And that, uh, I was uh, emphasizing a little bit that concept, thanks to the different layers of glass. And then the very simple line, uh, which I don't know, probably represents very well like a map, uh, like a card, a geographic map, our body. And there's a, something of a relationship between this piece, the idea behind this piece, I guess, and using glass and the idea of seeing behind something or seeing something from the other side or being able to see through is something that's really important. And I think that's where the idea of, of Wilsus that's um, cited next to the lake here at YSP. Part of the concept of that piece, was it the idea of looking at a coin? Wilsis, I guess, is part of that adventure to try to understand the backside of the pieces. And it was thinking about the coin, when you see the face in the coin and how it looks in the other side. 
and, and, and then I decided to compress the volume, the normal volume of one face, one head. And, and I think it was beautiful because something so opaque as the cast iron becomes almost invisible because when you are walking around, this, the piece seems to disappear, 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 and then you get back the piece in the other side again. I, I think probably for many people, it could be hard to understand the connections between, I'm talking about the leather, suddenly it's a head, suddenly it's the glass, suddenly I don't know. Uh, but it's, believe me, we are always talking about the same, which is the diversity of different points of view of a human being. I mean, in function of the light, when the light touches, it changes completely our way to be, to exist, to look at our perspective. And, and many times I, I mentioned that the human being is like a diamond with facets, and in function of the light, it seems one or another stone. And, and my work, I, I'm trying in my work to, to talk about those facets, those kind of elements that one day somebody could understand as a complete piece. Thank you, Jauma. And I'm sure on behalf of all of the visitors that will come and see the show here at the Western, thank you from them as well. You share so much of yourself in the work and I know that you have a very special place in the hearts of our visitors, in all of us here at YSP. So it's wonderful to have you back. Thank, thank you. you. I hope people will enjoy the show because when they come into my exhibition, they will be part of my exhibition. They will be one more of my sculptures together with my heads. <laughs> Thank you.